folks, China's two sessions are now underway, which refers to the annual meetings of the two major political bodies in China, the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. Uh, this is proclaimed as the largest event in the political life of the Chinese people by the People's Daily and Xinhua News Agency. Now, whether that's true or not is a different story. Uh, the funny thing about the two sessions updates is their inability to deliver any real news, given they stick to a pre-written script. Any objections? No hey objections. No objections. Hey all. No hey objections. All. It's Everyone implicitly knows the result beforehand, even before the votes are cast. But news about the two sessions often becomes news itself. For instance, people's facial expressions during voting or whoever gets carried out of the room are hot topics for domestic and international media. Sometimes these even make the headlines, and today is no different. On March 4th, a day before the National Congress, spokesperson Congressman Lu Chenjian held a press conference addressing some procedural issues about this year's Congress. A major news story broke out here. I am a China News Service reporter. After the conclusion of the 14th National People's Congress, I would like to know if the Premier of the State Council will be requested to participate in a press conference and answer questions from domestic and foreign journalists. Taking into account the aforementioned arrangements, there will be no Prime Minister's press conference after the closing of the 14th National People's Congress this year. Unless there are special circumstances, in the years ahead, the Prime Minister's press conference will no longer be held after this National People's Congress. It's a bit peculiar, this question from the China News Service reporter. Think about it. For over 30 years, the Prime Minister has held a press conference after the annual two sessions. So why did this China News Service reporter ask if the press conference will still take place this year? It seems like she and comrade Lu Qingjian had it all figured out, as if she knew in advance that Premier Li Qiang wouldn't hold a press conference after this year's two sessions. Coincidence. Seems like it was all set up by Lu Qingjian, informing the reporter in advance if you ask me. It's fair to say this news immediately sparked a huge reaction both domestically and abroad. Firstly, domestic folks who follow political news would have a strong reaction to the cancellation of the Premier's press conference after the annual sessions because, after all, many people care about it and it has high ratings. But why was it cancelled? Everyone's guessing, hence the huge reaction. However, you can't see this online at all. I checked Sina Weibo and even the posts about this news on Tutiao, there are virtually no comments, no opinions, just all shares. So what's going on? All comments and shares are being regulated. Now, if you want to search for Premier's press conference cancelled on Sina Weibo, it will not be displayed according to the law. Think about it. The annual press conference with China's Premier has two key features. First, it's the only chance for foreign media to engage with him, as he doesn't usually grant interviews. Secondly, the issues discussed are often important indicators of Chinese society. This year's sudden cancellation after 30 years has led to speculation about the underlying reasons. On March 5th, a foreign ministry spokesperson was immediately asked about this by an AFP reporter. The news arrangements for the second session of the 14th National People's Congress was introduced by the spokesperson of the conference this morning. I don't have any further supplementary information. During the two sessions, all meetings of the conference will be open to both domestic and foreign media. At the opening ceremony, Premier Li Chiang will represent the State Council to deliver a government work report to the second session of the 14th National People's Congress. In addition to the press conference held by the National People's Congress this morning. The conference will also organize various forms of interview activities such as press conferences, representative and ministerial channels, delegations, open groups, etc. to sufficiently release all information. The new center of the two sessions will also adhere to the spirit of openness and transparency to provide news services for Chinese and foreign journalists. Clearly, Mao Ning wouldn't dare to make any personal interpretations. Why was the Prime Minister's press conference cancelled then? In his response, Lu Qinzhen actually addressed three key points. Let's look at the first point he mentions. After the conclusion of the first session of the 14th National People's Congress, comrade Li Chiang, in answering questions from Chinese and foreign journalists, made an in-depth explanation on the comprehensive implementation of the spirit of the 20th Party Congress and the decision-making arrangements of the party central committee on key issues of economic and social development and government self-construction that are widely concerned by the media and the society, clarifying the work approach for the entire term. 
It's as if this means that the next five years are already set in stone, but such reasoning surely doesn't hold water. Consider this, the Chinese government's yearly reports get specific about that year's work. Last year, Li Qiang couldn't have detailed the next five years. If he did, wouldn't it render the past 30 years of annual press briefings by the PM superfluous? One would suffice, wouldn't it? So why the extra four? That argument surely doesn't hold water. The 14th National People's Congress is set to start tomorrow. Premier Li Chang will present a government work report. The National Development and Reform Commission and the Ministry of Finance, entrusted by the State Council, will submit written plans and budget reports to the Congress. It can be said that the main social concerns are specifically addressed in these three reports. After being approved by Congress, these reports will be released to the public, allowing the media and the public to easily understand the related content. Whether this reason is valid or not, I don't think it holds up either because don't you have these three reports every year? Doesn't the Prime Minister always give a government work report in each of these sessions? Anyways, next point. The Conference News Center will increase the frequency and attendance of ministerial press conferences and ministerial communication channels, inviting main leaders from relevant departments of the State Council to answer questions on diplomacy, economy, and people's livelihoods posed by domestic and foreign journalists and to provide authoritative interpretations of relevant policy measures. This will provide in-depth explanations and clarifications to issues of social concern. In addition, there will be open delegation group activities and well-arranged representative communication channels to provide more interview opportunities for domestic and foreign journalists. That essentially means journalists will still have opportunities to interview. But I reckon Foreign Minister Wang Yi must have been shaking in his boots after he said that. Remember last year, when Qin Gang as the Foreign Minister held a press conference? I know that the Taiwan issue is definitely going to be raised today. So I specifically brought a copy of the Constitution of the People's Republic of China. To answer your question, I'll first quote two sentences from the preamble of the Constitution itself. Barely days post the conference, he disappeared without a trace and remains missing. Despite resorting to the Constitution, Qin Gang lost his job last year. If you're in this situation now, uh, as foreign minister, you'll likely face questions from the international press that were meant for the premier, any slight mishap, and you could end up like Qin Gang. So none of the current reasons stand, and he even mentioned another reason. He also said we need to be more economical. Why should we be so thrifty for our annual meetings? Is it because the pandemic is over? Are everyone's pockets empty now? I guess that's why. Also, this year's two sessions only lasts for seven days. Historically, the longest meeting period lasted 14 days, but this year it's on par with the three years during the pandemic, shorter than last year's nine days. But I'm still thinking, the reason for this frugality doesn't seem quite sufficient. Just consider, what's the cost of a prime minister's press conference? It's mostly the PM's energy, some tea, a translator, and a venue rental at the People's Congress building. I reckon 500,000 RMB should do it. But if you skimp on that, what's the real cost? It's essentially losing you a connection between the PM and the public, and a chance to mingle with local and foreign press. That's a real loss. Also, in my opinion, a week is still too much for China's two sessions. Everyone knows the National Congress is just for show. We waste so much by bringing everyone to Beijing. Wouldn't it be easier to just use Zoom? Why bring all these National People's Congress delegates to Beijing? Simply put, it's to show the world that while those on the outside see it as just a show, the CCP disagrees. See, they all came to Beijing for a meeting, Everyone is clapping and voting. Sure, from a practical standpoint, we could cut these formalities. Why not use Zoom for voting? They could still ask any objections, none, and everything would be exactly the same. But this big gathering gives the impression that this all is indeed real. In my view, if you cancel this prime minister's press conference, you're actually at a big loss. The prime minister doesn't have much power to begin with, and now you're doing away with this form of meeting with the press. Isn't this more evidence that the prime minister doesn't actually contribute anything? So, in my view, the four reasons given by comrade Lu Qinjian don't really hold water. So why did the premier cancel the press conference this time? Let me share my thoughts. Prior to answering, a swift glance back at the history of the Chinese prime minister's press briefings is needed. The first press conference of China's premier took place in 1988 after the seventh plenary session, with Li Peng leading the vice premier and the foreign minister to field questions from reporters both local and foreign. 
a sight that's still etched in my memory. Back then, the press conference wasn't just the Prime Minister answering questions. Vice Premier Zhu Rongji and Yao Yilin both responded too. Yao Yilin's answers were surely prepared beforehand. After 88, there was no Prime Minister's press conference in 89. Everyone knows about 89, right? After the chaos of Tiananmen Square, Beijing was a mess. So the Prime Minister didn't hold a press conference. They had it for a few more years, from 90 to 91. But then, in 92, everything stopped because Deng Xiaoping left Beijing to go to other developed cities in the south. This was a time of intense internal party strife. In Zhuhai, Deng gathered high-ranking party members, including military representatives, and declared that those who didn't support reform should beat it. Meanwhile, Jiang Zemin in Beijing was clueless and wasn't invited to the meeting. Beijing didn't know how to respond to Deng's activities in the south, so no one dared to hold the press conference, unsure of Deng's stance. Thus, the 92 Prime Minister's press conference was cancelled. But from 93 onwards, the annual press conference resumed without interruption, even when Zhu Rongji took over and the conference was no longer attended by both the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, but by Zhu alone. Zhu Rongji proved himself as one of the most expressive Prime Ministers. It's often discussed that Zhu, referred to as the economic czar abroad, tackled two major issues during his tenure. One was the double-track pricing system. The second issue was ending the policy of life tenure for state-owned enterprises. Call me China's Gorbachev, call me the economic czar, whatever you call me. I'm not happy about any of it. At the moment, my thoughts are clear. No matter what danger lies ahead, I'll continue fearlessly moving forward without second thoughts and give my all until the end. The speech was deeply moving and resonated with many when it was delivered. Watching the Prime Minister's press conference, I was reminded of the feel of a U.S. presidential inauguration speech. Unlike the emotionless government work report delivered at the People's Congress, the press conference was brimming with personal touch. Zhu Rongji's press conference speech was particularly compelling, a trait that was seen in successors Wen Jiabao and Li Keqiang. According to an early recollection of a state council spokesperson, the main purpose of those press conferences was to allow foreign journalists to ask questions. The People's Congress had a press office for this, aiming to let these journalists understand the direction of China's policies, so there were often more foreign reporters than domestic ones. However, questions from domestic reporters like those from Xinhua News Agency, People's Daily and CCTV were pre-arranged. They would prepare their questions for the Premier in advance. On the other hand, foreign reporters didn't have scripts early on. So you can see that in 1988, when Li Peng answered reporters' questions for the first time, the questions from foreign reporters were very blunt, asking about things like Ding Guangen's resignation, issues about Tibet and human rights, and even about detained dissidents. Their questions were very intense. I would like to ask, with the establishment of China's cross-century leadership, do you think the June 4th incident has any historical experience that can be learned to avoid similar situations happening again, or will it become a historical burden for your new government? Also, you once said that no matter what kind of base Hong Kong is, you will still go. If in the future, when you go to Hong Kong again and someone petitions you to redress the June 4th incident, how would you view it? Furthermore, the Hong Kong Alliance in support of patriotic democratic movements of China, as well as ordinary residents hold activities to commemorate June 4th every year. What is your view on this? Thank you. Uh, the state premiers were quite adept at handling these issues back in the day, so these press conferences served their purpose. However, they gradually transitioned from an international to a domestic focus. It's a significant shift. Take, for example, Wen Jiabao's era. What was the most striking feature of his press conferences? Chongqing's leadership must reflect on the Wang Lijun case and learn. Without political reform, economic changes won't stick. Our gains could be lost. New problems may surface without solutions. And we could see another cultural revolution. You can see that these topics are essentially about domestic affairs, including Li Keqiang's press conferences. Over the past 30 years, you can see a change in the Chinese prime minister's press conferences. Foreign journalists initially had the freedom to ask whatever they wished with a certain unspoken understanding. However, during the Hu Wen era, some restrictions began to emerge. The foreign ministry started to discuss questions with these journalists in advance. Months before the prime minister's press conference, they would communicate with foreign journalists from the US, Japan, and Europe. Since 2004, the questions asked by these foreign journalists have been pre-approved by China's foreign ministry and the National People's Congress, including CNN, 
and Japan's NHK. These foreign journalists were quite vexed. They craved the chance to question the Chinese premier, a symbol of their agency's international influence. But the Chinese Communist Party vets their questions, reducing them to mere puppets of the premier. If they don't ask a question, they fade into obscurity. If they do, they're part of the CCP's orchestrated show. Over the years, they've voiced major concerns about this, but there's little they can do. Despite everything, China's Prime Minister can still show some personality during press conferences, even revealing some shocking information. The average annual income per person is 30,000 yuan, but there are 600 million people whose monthly income is only 1,000 yuan. It could be difficult simply to rent a house in a medium-sized city with just 1,000 yuan. These remarks stirred up a major buzz domestically, turning the annual prime minister's press briefing into a news highlight. News isn't about the two sessions itself, but about what unfolds there. The press briefing, however, is a yearly news goldmine. But this era is set to officially draw to a close after this year's two sessions. In a few years after this congressional term ends and the next one begins, I doubt if the Premier's press conference will resume. It's very unlikely. Some foreign media say an era has ended, and I agree. The era of limited openness is over, fading into history. After all, the Premier answering questions from domestic and foreign reporters showed China's willingness to face the media and communicate to an extent. But today, even this limited channel of communication has closed. The pressing question then is why Premier Li Qiang, or any Chinese Premier, wouldn't want to continue with these press conferences. What's the reason? Some international media suggest Xi Jinping simply disregarding the Premier completely. I find this view problematic. The reason is that the rapport between Li Qiang and Xi Jinping differs from any previous Premier President and Party General Secretary. Li Qiang was groomed by Xi Jinping and belongs to Xi's inner circle. So, there's no question of any power struggle between them. Xi doesn't aim to disgrace Li, and Li doesn't want to challenge him either. So why is there no news conference then? To me, it seems like Li Qiang simply didn't want to do it. Did you all notice the detail Lu Xinjiang added when he broke the news? This year, the second session of the 14th National People's Congress will not hold a prime minister's press conference after its conclusion. Unless there are special circumstances, the Prime Minister's press conference will not be held in the next few years after this National People's Congress. What does this mean? It suggests the halt of press briefings is just for this National Congress term. Who decided this? Likely Li Qiang, not Xi Jinping. If Xi decided to stop all future press briefings, he wouldn't limit it to this term. He would say, our Premier will never hold press briefings again. But Li Qiang, due to his term limit, can only decide for his term. Hence. This statement hints the decision was made by Li Qiang, not Xi Jinping. Why would Li Qiang make such a decision? Some people have analyzed it correctly. Li Qiang no longer wishes to be a prominent prime minister because the current state council has become a mere tool for the Communist Party. This is evident from Li Qiang's actions. After becoming the prime minister on March 17th last year, he called the first state council meeting and changed its working rules. This change is significant because according to the constitution, the highest authority is the National People's Congress, and the State Council is its executive body. Of course, we all know this isn't the reality. The highest authority is the Communist Party, and the National People's Congress is just a facade. But that's how Sasu the law is written. But you can see that Li Qiang's amendment has completely turned the State Council from a nominal executive body of the People's Congress into an executive body of the Communist Party. He said, we should fully implement the decisions of the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee and closely unite around comrade Xi Jinping's Party Central Committee. He stressed to always report and seek advice from the Party Central Committee. This involves a reporting process and work content which was not seen before in the State Council's rules, as it would be a direct affront to the Chinese Constitution. However, since Li Qiang's tenure as State Council Premier, this is how all revised content is written. Simultaneously, all legality-based publicizing of government affairs has been entirely removed. Previously, we considered publicizing as common practice and non-disclosure, as the exception, with key public interest numbers and data legally disclosed. This has now been fully abolished. What's left is steadfastly implementing all sorts of policies and decisions from the Central Committee of the Communist Party. 
from day one of Li Qiang's tenure, he's turned this into the state council's code of conduct. Li Qiang lacks ambition and doesn't desire to go toe to toe with Xi Jinping. He's self-defined and unashamed. He'd rather avoid unnecessary press conferences than court attention. This is the most reasonable or simplest approach to his relationship with Xi Jinping. If a press conference goes wrong, it could upset Xi Jinping, making things uncomfortable. So Li Qiang has turned the state council into an executive branch of the central committee. The importance of a press conference is trivial in this process. On one hand, she seems okay with Li not holding press conferences anymore. Makes you wonder about his motives, doesn't it? Sure, Li's press conferences were pretty run off the mill, nothing like the controversial statements from the past conferences. But you see, she's fine with breaking a 35 year tradition of the premier holding press conferences, doesn't bother him. If Li doesn't want to do it, so be it. How the public interprets it is their business, not Xi's. Maybe that's the political reality in China today. Whether it's good or bad for China's massive system and social development, well, that's up for debate. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you, everyone. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, State of Play in China, for more insider stories you won't find anywhere else. See you all next time. Call me China's Gorbachev, call me the economic czar, whatever you call me. I'm not happy about any of it. At the moment, my thoughts are clear. No matter what danger lies ahead, I'll continue fearlessly moving forward without second thoughts and give my all until the end. Chongqing's leadership must reflect on the Wang Lijun case and learn. Without political reform, economic changes won't stick. Our gains could be lost. New problems may surface without solutions and we could see another cultural revolution. The average annual income per person is 30,000 yuan, but there are 600 million people whose monthly income is only 1,000 yuan. It could be difficult simply to rent a house in a medium-sized city with just 1,000 yuan. This year, the second session of the 14th National People's Congress will not hold a prime minister's press conference after its conclusion. Unless there are special circumstances, the Prime Minister's press conference will not be held in the next few years after this National People's Congress.